Hello and good day. We are alive and we are doing a Kattenberg Dev update. I hope everyone's doing fine today. Welcome along. We have Spacey, we have Brainerd, we have Joe Hugh. Hello, hello. And we have honest Dan Games himself. Beautiful specimen. Uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing a, a mini update. Last Saturday we did an update with Brain and we didn't get, uh, there's a few bugs outstanding that Brain wanted to fix. Um, and I needed to do some designy thinking work. Uh, so we, we plan to meet up midweek or, or this weekend at latest uh, as a kind of midway point. So we'll be checking in, seeing uh, any little bits of progress. Um, and then we will be going through some of the design ideas I have, talking it over before Brain can like set some tasks up based on that to, to implement over the coming weeks then. Uh, interestingly, we're also talking a little bit with Spacey, uh, our wonderful artist for the project, uh, trying to entrust uh in spaces creativity and like general funniness um to and and wordsmithery to kind of uh see if she can help us with some ideas about the origin of the different archetypes that we have which is uh basically like the the fighter or the tank or the wizard kind of school of uh, expertise uh trying to see if we can come up with some form of like um story backing for the different types of expertise that characters can have um in order to help us feed into some future design stuff we've got going on no problem i'm in chattenberg brainoid i see you i will join you right now hello brainoid hello brainoid what oh well, hello, hello, hello. Hello, <laughs> hello. How goes it? It goes good. Ah, that is good news. How was uh, dinner at your friends? Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Uh, ribeye steak, uh, oven baked carrots, uh, Brussels sprouts, and broccolis, and a nice, colorful salad. Ah, that does sound nice. That sounds very nice indeed. Cat. I'm a kitty cat, a kitty and I cat. praise cat god, and I praise cat god. <laughs> yes, definitely that, Spacey. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's their chant. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. Thank you for 31 months of, of uh, friendship and support, Spacey. Uh, it's appreciated. Oh, it's, a, it's an English at Griffin as well. How nice of the wife to drop in and support the stream. How nice. It was part of the vows. Oh, I will mute. give you plus one viewer on Twitch. That's what she said. No, I muted you. Sorry. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, uh, we did have a compile issue, and it was just classic. Uh, I needed to include something because on yours it doesn't matter, but on mine it does. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, by the way, I, I don't think there's much to test. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, well, I, I fixed those bugs, and uh, I couldn't reproduce. The other one. Oh uh, yes, I, I remember the one that what where we yeah. lost the ability. Yeah, I spent a day trying several stuff, but uh, <laughs> no, it just works properly. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Well, we, these things happen. We'll just wait until we see it again and see if it gives us any more information. There's no hassle with that. So uh, yeah, let's go and have a look at the feedback from last time. Then we didn't have a massive like to do list, but um, why oh, doesn't page down? Or end work in a document it bad anyway so i i, I started uh, making the uh, the card smith pop up yes uh, so actually we have it in the notes but uh, there's not much to do in there yet uh, because like uh, it's too much work to change all the cards to have the uh, upgraded version right <laughs> yes yeah yeah so, that's fair uh, i didn't implement it yet i, I i'm a, a, even questioning it because uh, in, in these small rounds we are making, uh, we're not gonna uh, be upgrading our cards, I guess. Uh, first, yeah. we, we need a longer run version. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think that's impacting a few things at the moment as well. So I think maybe um, we, we need to think about how we can uh, start to think more about, I guess, what we spoke about with Spacey earlier today, of like, how is this world slash story going to be set out like we're not looking for like a deep rich story ultimately we want it to be a repeatable story ideally right or oh, like a repeat reason why you go out with a different set of adventurers to go and fight these bosses again so yeah. okay. other than uh the story uh 
I also wrote down some problems I have with the current version that that not problems like like things that are missing uh, that we we could prioritize over like the the cart smith. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Because uh, I I do think you're right. Once we have a bit of a longer state of play, where there could be different types of enemies, perhaps. I know we already have like rats, <laughs> um, yeah. a lot of rat enemies, but in a way, it'd be interesting to come up with more i i'm i'm interested to see whether we can make enemies feel different enough um from from a, like new enemies whether we can make those feel different enough with just coming up with new abilities or do we have to come up with an extra mechanic of like how enemies attack you you know where um like we already have the areas the environments which will hopefully make a difference like uh so that that's going to give a bit of a f different feeling um like in the swamp, it might be some something happens every so often. All this, so uh, yeah, I can't I can't think of the top of my head, but it just be that. So then you'd kind of associate that with the enemies you have in a swamp region. So that yes. might help, but um, still, we're, if we start trying that out, we'll start to come across some of the issues because that might, <clears throat> sorry, that might lead us to need to really tweak our game, uh, like that <clears throat> some of the key mechanics. Let me drink a sec. Okay. While you're, while you're drinking, I, I, I can talk. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> you, were, you were speaking for like uh, the last three minutes. Um, I say two. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe before uh, discussing your side of things, uh, things you, you uh, discovered, explored, whatever, uh, maybe we can talk about the, the issues I wrote down uh, for me. Yeah, sure. Um, do you have them somewhere shareable? Well, well we... I I don't have them properly written somewhere, but uh, okay, I can write stuff as you if we talk about them. So, um, so yeah, just, would... let's call yeah, it a brain note review. Okay. Um, so first of all, I I think uh, in these runs you don't care much about the deck building at the moment. Still, I mean, we have lots of things there, but still, I I, I don't feel necessary to change my deck a lot. Yes. Yes, and, and I, yeah. Sorry. Go uh, on. One of the thing, uh, the reasons here is because the not non ability slot cards are uh, not very fun or mostly boring. I don't know. Um, and they are not making use of the new face to face layout we have. Hmm. Um. Some of them do, right? No, I mean, we, we changed the layout, then I didn't implement new cards because we, we had these new ideas of, uh, like, blocking the symmetrical side of... Oh, um, right. Uh, right. Okay, okay. Like a directional attack in a way, right? You're saying that yeah, where you could... Stuff, yeah, we don't have those yet, or we didn't focus on them yet. Um... Shall I continue? Uh, let me. I'm just trying to think how to write it out. Um, non ability yeah. slot cards uh, aren't super interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that, but um, I'll jot it down regardless. And I also, another factor that could contribute to it is like uh, there's no restrictions. Yeah, so, it, it, I only talked about one reason. The other reason is maybe the uh, rewards are not balanced enough, right? Uh, you could find better rewards. Oh, so. yeah, the, the fact that we have strong cards already. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like if we start with the most basic cards only. Like we, we talked about a bit about that before, about having this base deck, right? But I think we ended up trying to make a base deck still. we've Maybe we need to limit that even further. And also uh, the enemies we face are not directly... Uh, connected with the cards we have we all always uh encounter the similar enemies so oh, we're not feeling necessary to change our deck yes yeah that's another good point uh and yeah uh, same enemies so no benefit or oh, so lack of um strategizing deck to uh fit enemy type for example Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's a that's a very fair point. In terms of the, just to discuss it a bit further, the, the non-ability cards you're saying like not interesting or not utilizing uh, the positioning, the 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 game positioning. 
So I don't like, didn't you make quite a few though that are like, you know, if it's straight on, then it does this. Otherwise it only does that. Yes, but like, uh, not, not ones that are really targeting the slot cards. Targeting the slot. Oh, what? So you can do stuff to the other people's slot cards, you mean? Yes. Right. Uh, right, okay. So, what, like the things like to, the, yeah, g give some examples. Uh, for example, uh, one is denying, second, trapping them, uh, third uh, is maybe changing them f from anything from their deck. Yes, yeah, okay. So, force them to like recite, like to yeah, put it, a new discard one. it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, now I understand what you mean by it. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, we haven't implemented, but would these be like our own cards? Uh, sorry, our own slot cards, or would these be support style cards? Imagine a slot card uh, hitting in the line and like, uh, yeah, 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 and changing all the cards, mm. like something, trapping all the cards. Yeah, because it's it's one of those where it feels like if you just had like a you say you've got to play your priest on a card in order to disable one of their cards, it feels not worth it. It feels like I'd imagine I'd just want to go and attack them on the face or heal instead of doing that. Yeah. So it needs to be tied in like you suggested. Just wondering the the different. Yeah, we could explore that and see if we come up with some good ideas. And high health, by the way. Um. Okay. Okay. Then. Uh. Yeah, so this included uh, things like our um, force discard, and this could be a trap. This could be just like a peak. We get to look at this and they don't. To, well, that'd be quite weak, but still. Um, and then what was the other one you said? Can I remember? Uh -huh. You gave me three. One was trap, one was to discard it, and one was to block it, I think, was it? Yeah. Is that for a turn, maybe, or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's I, cool. I think deny shouldn't be like uh, mu deny multiple cards. It should be only a single card. Yeah. That, yeah. Not too many. The other ones I'm struggling to think like how do we implement something that does something useful in the game, like healing or attacking or defending. But also because it just feels weird to see like defend your teammate and select one of the enemy cards to disable you know something like that it, it seems like uh they're not really thematically tied together but yeah. i mean maybe maybe it doesn't matter maybe really maybe you can have like four different ways of defending but each one gives you a little extra thing you can do um uh, such as affect enemy cards or or um choose some cards in your deck to to reshuffle or something like that i don't know okay uh carry on then Next points. So first uh, off, well, deck building wasn't feeling necessary to change your deck as you go through. Yeah, it was mostly this, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, my problems are around this. As you can see, I had multiple uh, points in this one. Yeah. But uh, I, I also think the navigation map is boring as well at the moment, uh, yeah. the way it is. Uh, and I, I, I really hate to implement more things on the on it because it's it's using UMG. <laughs> yeah. I'm really tempted to uh, redesign it really quick, real quick uh, on 3D. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, you could do like the other option is we could try something like they have in um, Banners of Ruin, where you have yeah. just the card showing because it'd be quicker. The downside with that is it's hard for you to kind of like forward plan, which is something we kind of want. We like we want those choices. Like, oh, I want to go right because there's a smithy that way. Let's say. Yeah. And we lose that a bit and let. Unless you just lay down the cards. <laughs> yeah, could that work? I don't know if it would. No, I think maybe doing it in 3D would be better. Yes, I prefer that as well. Because it just gives us more scope. But um, and, and I will implement the thing you want easier. Uh, some nodes are not connected to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's complicated to add to current map due to implementation. Um, 
So yeah, I don't, it, it won't look that good. Eh? Yeah, we need to know what we do want first, right? Yeah. So, like, something... I Have you got my stream up? Yes, I have it. Yeah, yeah. So, part of me, I was feeling like... Oh, actually, there's probably an easier way to show this. Um, oh, not Stormwind. Oh, where is Stormwind? No, this will do. This is what I'm looking for. So... Uh, in WoW, WoW, the the human area, you have like this kind of map here where the castle is up in this left corner, and then you can like travel outwards. Um, so, uh, like, I'm trying to think of how story could work. If if like Kattenberg is there is like one central bit where like the king or the queen or whatever lives, and then you know that's the safe bit where corruption has, or maybe it's our last standing corner. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. we, we can work on the story but um it, it's essentially thinking like would we want um you know these different town oh give me a pen sorry these different towns to maybe be like the different bosses if you will so say we're, we're like traveling on a route that eventually needs to get to like big uh the end boss over here why can't i see my mouse there we go over here um so uh this is like a giant map. This isn't going to be like the node to node map, let's say. Sure. And then like, if you start here, we're, we're going to have our node based stuff basically along this sort of path until you get to this boss. It'd be yeah, a bit. We can, we can still uh, divide the node maps in, into chapters or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down, for, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Uh, by the way, I, I'm curious. I didn't check it. So, uh, how, how did they approach it that, uh, in Darkest Dungeon 2? Because you said it, it was a node map as well. Yeah, uh, you no, know, it, it's basically just a three-lane map in Darkest Dungeon. So I mean, oh, sorry. What I mean is like in, in Darkest Dungeon one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it it wasn't it it was a little vague that uh, where you are going to right uh, when you're doing your raids to the when you're um, walking through the place. Yeah. Do yeah. You so maybe you are walking like. Uh, a hundred thousand kilometers away, but yeah, you don't have that uh, knowledge. Yeah, really, but it works. So okay, so in in um, Darkest Dungeon two, they you have this like v visible map on the side, which is the lanes, and you have a, a torch on it, which represents your wagon. Which when you're so the main kind of way you're moving is you're holding W to move your horse and carriage and follow like a road. Torch, you mean you mean lantern? Yeah, uh, like, yeah, yes, they took our idea. It's fine. It's fine. We didn't No. Um, so, yeah, there, there is a lantern. Uh, and uh, so effectively, that lantern will move on the mini map to kind of show how far you are along a branch of yeah, that yeah. node. Uh, and But you're using WS, uh, AD or WAD, really, to kind of move between the different uh paths and when you get to a certain point on it it'll like stop you moving and do a little animation and bring the kind of cutscene forward and then you oh, make like a choice Pokemon. of what you're doing um kind of yes <laughs> <laughs> screen goes dun, into like dun, twisty dun, stuff dun, 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 dun. yeah okay so uh yeah they they have the map it, it it's kind of sometimes you get to a point on it where you feel like you, you should be at the like the point of interest on it you're like at the end of the line but you're still traveling for a while afterwards. So it's not, it doesn't seem like it's exactly mapped, but it's, it's a representation of it at least. But the reason I, I wanted to show this like map here of Stormwind was more of just to get an idea of like, uh, if you want to make a, a 3D one, we could have, even if we just have it as a start point, you know, we could have something like this where we're going on a big journey all the way to the right. And each kind of chapter is just like a leg of that path, you know? Yeah, uh, for this one, I'm going to fall back to Pathway again, <laughs> because they did yeah. chapter two. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that sounds fine to me. Um, like, we could even say, like, the bosses are, you know, uh, have taken over, like, towns. And that's why, at the end of that chapter, we're back at, like, a starting, uh, a starting town, I guess, before you go off again. I don't know. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe not. I don't know. I don't... But regardless, that that's stuff yeah, that we can decide on. Story, right? Okay. Yeah. Um. But the, so I wanted to bring this up just from a point of view of if you're going to try and do a three D one, then uh, just to, some idea of how we could st structure it, because we could design a three map a three D map to suit 
and then we could just chuck on your system of like where it would chuck down these little either meshes or whatever you plan to do for to represent the different things uh, and then draw like lines between it or what have you uh, i quite liked the how it looked in um inscription uh but i think it was very hard kind of coded in a way the the map in inscription it was quite basic as well it was just like always rocks separating the way you were going yeah i don't know why but i i prefer some kind of procedural generation but uh yeah Hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, what, procedural generation of what, the area? Or do you mean of the nodes? Yeah, the nodes. The nodes, I, I agree with, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, that, that's fine. I think the area, it would be nice to just have it. it I think it, it's difficult to make it look good and feel, like, full and everything if we're trying to, like, procedurally generate the world. Um, and it may not even be needed, you know? But, yeah, having... Having the the nodes be able to to kind yeah, of it depends on the style, but yeah, I, I I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, let's go back to this list then. Uh, where were we? Da, 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 da. So uh, navigation all... map is that's all from you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, I think just to just to summarize some of the issues, then it's just like all nodes are connected. Uh, current issue. Uh, yeah. And also, we want more It's events. harder to have it uh, properly scrolled on uh, UI. I think yes. a 3D map is funner that way. Yes, yeah. I mean, you can always use hex if you want, Bray. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm still thinking about my um, hex environments idea, um, but not going to explore it yet. Wait, elaborate. Uh, so, in in each uh, hex, we have a node map. Oh, right, yes. Sorry, I get you. So, essentially, these orange things are like a hex tile almost. Oh. Yes. Yeah, and then when you go to one inside of each hex tile, it has its own little node map. Is that what you mean? Yeah, kind yeah. of. And uh, most of the hexes have different environments in them. So Yeah. So you get a choice of like, are we going to the sandy place still, or are we going to change to this area? And that you know that may be influenced by what cards you've got. Yeah, and, but, and maybe we can have we can make use of the hex, uh, hex map. Like, uh, hex could be fast travel. There could be fast travel somewhere in the nodes, and you could jump to another hex style without a tunnel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tunnels. <laughs> a tunnel system. We'll get that trio in. That's fine. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That 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 could work. So it's a way to jump out your current node map, is it? And then like take you to a a new tile. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. For yeah, it because that that could be interesting if you're currently in a in a bad way or maybe. But yeah, it depends whether it take you to safety or whether it's just going to take you to. Yeah, it's gamble. Yeah. Most um... Yeah, Brainerd likes a good gamble, but I think gambles are fun. It's a fun decision as a player to make, right? Yeah. Uh, hello, Uno Maestro. Hello, Outfrost as well. Here are my paws. We'll, we'll definitely have a gambler character, an NPC in the game, I guess. Um, Can we call it Jeffrey? Out of just... <laughs> yeah, that stumble upon and you play uh, uh, something uh, using your thief, a uh, high, high luck character. <laughs> yes, yes. That would be good. Um, okay, uh, no, no, that was good to hear. Um, I think yeah, very good points. And the the point with this is like it needs to, it should possibly be a priority rather than um, you know the other parts that we've got because it's really hard to gauge the success or how good it feels in the other parts, right? True. Yeah. Uh, hey, Enric as well. Welcome to chat. Nice to see you. Um, Okay, uh, so what was it that you implemented then, good sir? Is there anything for me to test? I know you said there's not a, a massive amount, but... Uh, yeah, you can check it, actually. You just press play, uh, start the run. Okay, I'm uh, also going to just... I realize every time I play this, I full screen it, and people can't see the cards at the bottom right. You've told me about this before, and I ignored you. So let me just set, change my screens. Oh, actually, it's not going to be the right aspect ratio, is it? Uh, it's close enough. That'll do. 
Uh, okay. So, starting a run, we have Mage, Priest, Warrior. Good, good comp. Press six. <laughs> ah, okay. <gasps> Look at the little icon we have already. Okay, so I guess we can just go and heal. Uh, let's. We don't have you any could, money. Well, so you could skip. just press on. Oh, I could have jumped, go straight to it. I forgot that's a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> let's go to Mobius. Okay. Okay, so here we have a smithy. Let me just F11 it as well. Uh, since we don't care about the bottom right at this point. So here you have a chance to either forge a card or upgrade a card. Look at this beautiful cat. Spacey, this is not a spacey illustration. Braino just found a fat blacksmith By the way, cat. Because, because we uh, pressed 6 and uh, came here, yeah. we don't see the darkener. So, uh, ah, that's why it's quite... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair, that's fair. Hard to read. Yeah, yeah. So these would be the case where you could forge a card given using different resources, right? Or you yeah. could upgrade a card and then it brings up... Oh, okay, so have we got three bullies? Yes. Uh, to test it, I added three bullies. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. So would I click on that? And then, oh yeah, combine three cards into one better one. In order to be able to upgrade, you need to have a uh, minimum amount of slot cards in your... Uh, in yeah, your oh, so you can't trade in like three of them and it would bring you underneath the minimum amount. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's, it's confusing, right? Yeah, uh, it, it makes sense, but yeah, it's a it's a mouthful to introduce to to begin with. But to be honest, by the time they get to do that normally, it shouldn't be... It should kind of make uh, sense. What, what I'm imagining here, so we don't have any functionality uh, after this. So uh, you, you click on bully and then if, you, if you're if you going to go down from the minimum amount, uh, if you upgrade, then it will warn you. Uh, yeah. You cannot... Uh, yeah. If you can do it, uh, it will just hide the... Because there will be several cards here that if you have yeah. more than uh, bully. Um, and it will hide that... A scroller and show you another uh, panel that uh, like bullies earlier version and the next version yeah. uh, you can uh, check both uh, tooltips mm -hmm. and then an upgrade button maybe yeah uh, under them yeah okay like the thing with some of the upgrades just make, taking the wisdom cost of a, a, a down to play on it would be pretty good yeah um because, like, say it's free to play on. That's really worth upgrading then, right? Because that gives you a whole extra choice per hand, which can be quite strong. Yeah. Probably for some cards we will do that. Yeah, yeah. And for some we will increase the damage and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or allow you to target or whatever it be. But cool. Yeah, so... No, that's good though. I, I like it. It's, uh, I definitely like the, 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 the visuals, the theme of it. The button is not working. Is it? Does it work? Or Wh Which button, get... sorry? Skip, did you click that? No. Yeah, it doesn't work, sorry. Okay. <laughs> but still, okay, no, 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 that's cool, that's cool. And in terms of um, bugs that we addressed as well, uh, what did you say? Uh, we done. let me just have a little look at this document here. Wait, 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 bugs, so uh, when you support card, it can't be fulfilled, it breaks the card that you're playing on. Did that one get sorted? Yeah, there's a little plus next to it. Nice. Yeah. This we couldn't reproduce. Uh, the heel didn't save. Nice. Okay, we fixed that one. And perfect scratch trinket didn't work as well. Cool. Um, all of those are sorted. We don't really need to discuss this further. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. And then in, in terms of goals that we set up, you said something like tie starting ability or ultimate to the character somehow. And this was something you said, don't worry, I know what I'm on about here. Okay. Uh, did we have any thoughts on that? Or is it still just that's pending to do? No, that's pending and yeah. I have... I'm planning to implement the rest of the trinkets as well with that. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, it's it's my pipeline. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds fine to me. Hey, Hexadona as well. Nice to see you. Uh, so meet, meeting to catch up with Brainoid. That's what we're doing now. And then I was meant to design stuff as well. Yes. Uh, oh, we also had some goal ideas as well. Uh, before we go through what I tried designing as well, we will... Um, we'll have a look at some of these as well. So this was card upgrade, three of them to change the plus version. Yeah, so we kind of already got that. Uh, we did talk about we might downgrade the default version of True Strike. Yeah. So that um, so that so that's on the agenda, I guess. And then uh, tier... Do you think we should start with the default version? Um, 
I guess, right? What do you mean by <laughs> what do you mean by what by the base version? You mean? Uh, yeah, not upgraded one. Yes, hundred percent. You shouldn't start with any upgraded cards. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and tier two card packs. Whether we should have them different, like during play as well. I still think that'd be fun to explore once we have a, a bigger game flow. Yeah, it was a bug. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> Indeed, it, it, made, it made the uh, board more colorful. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it, I think it, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Um, oh, I did. I did write some uh, silly ideas down. Where was yeah, it? I saw one. One was interesting. <laughs> yeah, so I said, I wonder how it would feel if you can drag a character onto a face down card. Um, this I wrote in card game design. So uh, the idea of this would be that uh, at the moment it, you, it costs uh, uh, wisdom or action points, I should say. Sorry, action points to reveal a card, and then it costs uh, however many action points associated with that card to play the card. So that's where things get a bit tricky, um, the, the kind of cost thing. But if we disregard that for now, the, the benefits of potentially this sort of idea would be that um, in a situation where you've only got one uh, attack uh, action point left, at the moment all you do is you can reveal a card so you have knowledge for next turn, which is fine. Um, but it would give, instead of doing that, you could just gamble a character to go, oh, well, we'll just play them on this card and hope it's something good instead. Um you could also uh, it more rewards the fact that you remember what cards from the pre have been played last round because it means that you can actually play on those without playing the cost. Um, and then the the third benefit of it would be it gives more. But if you utilize those two advantages I just said, then it gives you more uh, action points for searching for the cards you actually need, rather than feeling like you don't have much action points to reveal cards. Yeah. Uh, um, downside to it or technically difficult side to it is how does it work if you if you play onto a true strike i understand we don't pay the reveal cost but would you pay the uh the actual true strike cost i think you probably should but then what if you only have one action point left and you try and drag onto a true strike card uh then you'll say oh you can't do this but then you can kind of cheese and figure out what's on the board doing that <laughs> So I I might try this further in the development, but it, it feels like it's too confusing and overkill at the moment. Mm, yeah, yeah, it was just something that cropped up as a random thought earlier today. So um, that's all good. Uh, I would catch up on chat, but it's also just uh, Uno Maestro flaming us in the chat. How, how dare? What would be different? Um. I'm just. Oh, nice. Are you out on a walk or something, Spacey? I assume, rather than a guy in your apartment <laughs> asking you how you're doing, that would be that would be more alarming, I guess, right? Spin-off TV, yes. Yes, I did. My choice of words was appropriated just for you, Uno. Uh, did we have any other ideas that I was going to mention? I still had uh, the idea of. Positional play, right? Okay. Yeah, so I uh, I mentioned this last week the idea of when you play on a card your character could stay there um, And the reason I think it could be interesting is because it might give us more scope to make interesting boss fights um, Or even different environments where like imagine a boss fight where they don't have cards You know, they're just something that you need to attack and survive Yeah um, then you could, they don't even have cards and you could just have a board of your cards. You could have your cards in any shape then, you know, um, although that does come, uh, as long as you, well, you'd still need the opposite slot sort of mechanic, but that's fine. The enemy could be on the right side of the screen, taking all three slots, if you will. Well, in, in Ar Arcanium, the game Arcanium, yeah, they, yeah. They, they do it like, uh, the boss have two, uh, mobs instead of rats, uh, or shields. Uh, right. As uh, you have to kill them first to be able to damage the actual boss. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, they would ask uh, <laughs> the the shields would almost act as those like uh, little minion slots that we spoke of. Yeah. And then there'd just be a boss that took up all. Like you could attack any slot position and it would attack the boss there. Um, in Kattenberg, I'm trying to think now. 
Because say you have like a one that's a targetable one, or you do extra damage if it's the opposite slot to you. Yes. Then you'd kind of want to be able to, if you hit bottom slot, that hits the boss. If you hit top slot, that hits the boss as well. But um, anyway, the purpose of this is, is you could, eat, uh, yeah, I just thought that like the boss could be something that's more kind of not just a different card on the right side of the screen. You know, it could do more dynamic things to the board. It could shuffle things. It could, uh, and and the idea of um, if your characters moved around when they play on things, then that that could make it interesting for like avoiding more things. We've talked about like the trees and stuff like that before falling over and damaging a row or a column or whatever. Um, and so yeah, I think it, it gives that a little element of that. But that that at the moment is limited to just like. The, the slot locations right whereas if you moved when you attacked or used the card then that would give us a bit more dynamic range for that i don't think we need this yet it's just a uh, fuel for the thought and if i'm honest with you that's what led to the idea of um making it free to like you could play on a card if you can't see it yeah. or even you could just move on to it but don't reveal it or something you know just when so you were, when you were talking of, sorry man uh, when okay. you were talking about swamp Mm -hmm. uh, I had this idea of uh, all the cards uh, placed on the board have a random uh, lifetime of uh, two to five turns, for example, mm. and they uh, swap automatically. Uh, swap uh, it? Do you mean like they get uh, discarded? Do you mean all yeah, this? They yeah. get discarded uh, and a new one is thrown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, that, that's a cool mechanic. Go on. Yeah, so it's like they're uh, sinking. <laughs> in the yeah. swamp yeah no i think uh, that could work especially with the if we make it so that you could kind of, i don't know i guess the trouble at the moment i guess is that you only tend to remember the cards that you played like last turn that you revealed and so would it, it would have more of a poignancy i guess if we had more mechanics in the game that help you have visibility on your current cards, right? Or maybe like even that like tier two card back mechanic. Because if you oh, see yeah. one of those going to disappear, then it feels worse, right? It makes you go, oh no, I don't want to lose that one. Yeah, I thought it was just a change of pace. You you start to uh, yeah prioritize your cards here. Uh, I have to play this one because it's going to disappear. Yeah. Sorry to bring it back up, but that would also be interesting if you could stand on a card as well. Yeah. Because <laughs> if the card got sunk, then what happens to the character? That'd be... Uh, yeah. You're insisting on that idea, so... Yeah, I'm, we'll... I, no, I'm just uh, <laughs> tying it to what I was just saying. But yeah, I don't, I don't even know what it'd be like. I feel like it'd be interesting to try sometime, but um, I think it, it probably changes too much to actually work. So... Um, but yeah, maybe, uh, maybe you can move on the face down uh, cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm uh, like the unrevealed cards. You mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether it costs action point? Yeah, I I don't know because it, it it just brings in positioning a bit more because our current positioning at the moment is just being able to swap characters for two AP, right? Yeah. So it, it just brings in more. Like when we bring in the like the minion line or whatever we call it. I wish I remember the old name we had for it. Um but uh when we bring in like that minion slot if we do, then front that line. the front line, yes. I think that's what it was called actually. Yeah, yeah we, I guess. If we if we um bring back in that front line, then that would give us uh, a bit of an idea of how positional like things being in the way uh could feel good. Um yeah, but uh, it's it's not a uh, urgency something to do for now yeah, at least, I is it? Just edit it in the do document so we can search for minion and uh, uh, realize <laughs> it's online. <laughs> nice. Uh oh. Oh yeah, I, th I thought I undid that then. Oh what I was like undo doesn't. Oh yeah, Control Shift Z is redo. That's fine. I oh. I also edit this shuffle thing um here. Oh, right, okay. So does that just, like, mix it with another card? Yeah, mix it with the line, in, inside the line. Yeah, yeah, okay, that sounds cool. Uh, oh, yeah, and they don't know which one is which. That would, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Um. Oh, yeah, there's a random idea I wrote at the bottom earlier as well about, like, the, the, the roguelike 
sort of progression of with this smithy or whatever we call it with the ability to card smith i think we said like to to be able to craft cards or upgrade your cards if we're talking about crafting though uh, like new cards based on giving them stuff then um it'd be interesting if you had a, an ability to like find these blue blueprints which allow you to actually for that to have the potential to make that card then yeah so, so it goes into your inventory right uh yeah it's like an item not a card uh, and you give it to him and he's like, oh, brilliant. Uh, I've learned how to do this. And then if you happen to give him the right resources, then he could give you that card then. Yeah. Or yeah, there's a chance of that card just as a way of, because how they normally do it is if you beat a run, then they say, oh, you can now use these cards. Yeah. So, you know, you could do that. It was just trying to think whether it'd be a good idea. I think Rogue Legacy, now that I've said it, did a similar thing with... um. The newest one, at least. Uh, no, I think the old one did it as well. You, it, while in your playthrough, there's a random drop you can get, which is like a, a blueprint, and you take it to the upgrade person. And then that allows you to... You can pay for him to to learn it, and then that allows you to have better armor or whatever it is. Yeah, it's a good mechanic. I, I've seen it in several games, and mm. yeah, I, I, I always liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice way of going, oh, that, that, that's that's something good for permanent. Even if this run's going a bit bad, there's something good full time out of it, which is nice. Okay, um, did you have anything else on your mind to talk about now before I move on to... Yeah, actually, before... Um... We go into the uh, all the story stuff and and maybe uh, things related to story. Uh, I, I want to explore how how this how Kettenberg would be uh, if we had uh, something similar to uh, Darkest Dungeon One a uh, base idea. Like you always return back to base and you stack characters and they heal up. You can use. Yeah, do you know what? I'm not opposed to it. You think I was more resistant to it before, but yeah. I think it. I think it could help us with the, the 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 map and the story idea. You know that we end up coming back. The other thing is that the use of uh, the ability cards we 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 collect, right? Right. Uh, carry on. Uh, explore. Uh, the rewards. We get ability cards as rewards, and then we we assign them to the characters. Yeah. And like getting rid of the character, we, we had this issue. Like, are we losing the abilities? Or yes, yeah. So if there are default abilities, yeah, it makes sense, and uh, you can you use the character again uh, on the next run. So, are your thoughts then that um, you choose three? You don't gain a character while on the map anymore in this sort no, of way. No, you can. You can. Okay. Uh, do we still have the problem of say you had three and then you get a new one? What happens to the cards, the abilities of that character? Yeah, it stays on that character and they go back to the base. Oh, so they go back to base. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. I I see the link now. Yeah. Uh, like I'm I'm not opposed to doing it uh, if if I'm honest with you because it would also make sense in the story side of things that we we're talking about earlier with Spacey, is that uh, yeah. It's it's almost not. Mm, I don't know how I feel about it. Sorry, organize my thoughts. Um, it makes sense because then you could have the like the six different. I I we're using the word factions, but you know what I mean. They're not factions, but yes. the the six different arch, uh, archetype people groups could all be in the town, and you basically after a run you come back and you have these resources, and then you can buy cards or you can roll for cards from them right but the downside is that would be like between runs whereas really the idea of these resources was for during a run yeah that's the bit i don't like um but we could also i like the idea of like having a card box at the town um and you choose which cards you want to bring with you but if you fail a run do you, you lose all the cards <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I i didn't think everything about this i, I... yeah it's a huge thing, I think, and we'll see. Uh, I, I just think that we need to uh, consider it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. Um, yeah, we'd have to think. It, it, it would change some things, definitely, in terms of the... Like, uh, the per run thing basically changes. Like, I think... Quite uh, with a with a typical kind of Slayer the Spire style one, you're building up in one run and that's it. Um, 
there's tiny things you take forward to the next run, but generally speaking, it's each is its own adventure. Whereas Darkest Dungeon One style is very much it's a long term game, you know, and um, you're just hoping to 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 level things up to make them stronger, so eventually you can get to the end. Um, uh, it's it's more uh, to a game that's based uh, more on the story, I guess. Uh, which oh what the Darkest Dungeon one. Yeah, it's it's easier to uh, divide the game uh, in chapters in in that uh, setup, I guess. Uh, what as if yeah you what as if you need to go out to different places. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, and also it would allow us to do that. Um, oh, you're under attack to, to spice up the game mode a little bit as well. Oh yeah. For little events, it makes sense why you're being attacked and why you've got to hold off a few waves. And that you could change your active characters. That'd be interesting. Because <laughs> you're at the base. You can call in any of them, you know? Yeah. Tag in like three tanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be interesting. Um, I, I really want to rename them as well. Like, like being able to... Uh, oh, rename the characters, you mean? To yeah, give them and, names. And, and tank, bard, and priest is their class names. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I feel what you're saying. Um, we just won't rely on chat for name generation again. <laughs> oh, no. After the Ludum Dari 49. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to try and flesh out the, the idea then more. Maybe to flesh out both ideas and see where it comes, uh, like where we end up with. Yeah. What we end up with. Um, to try and, um, I'll put that down as a goal for next time, I guess. Uh, so this was like review on 14th of 11th, 21. Um, and this was going to be, uh, I guess, uh, we are going to focus on the uh, map, navig uh, navigation and um, campaign, I guess, um, for a bit because it is hard to assess the uh, how well other things work until we have the more meaningful campaign. That's fine. Uh, we also uh, we want to explore the Slay the Spire versus Darkest Dungeon um, game loop. Um, so action points from this would be to like uh, write out to uh, fleshed or write to fleshed out um, uh, like fake runs, I guess, or mm -hmm. example runs of how it could work and how uh, the style impacts the gameplay. Uh, Okie dokie. Can we give them color variations? Why not? Uh, we have a fake generator. <laughs> yes, of course, uh, Spacey. Of course we could. Uh, we can... Go on. Just a little more complicated if we have uh, like other poses, like almost animation. But yeah, why not? Oh, I see what you mean. Uh... Yeah, but hopefully, I guess when we if we get to that point, it would be a we'd probably have a better pipeline in place there, where Spacey could do the stuff for us, right? True. Not the animation, Spacey. Don't worry, just the the poses. Um. Okay, uh, so we want to write our two fleshed out examples, uh, yeah, to help us understand. But in the meantime, regardless of way we, so I guess the 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 map we should focus on should only be one chapter long. If, if if we're not sure yet, or may, like maybe ha yeah, they don't have to be connected. So maybe we could like create two chapters, that, uh, ch chapter maps. I mean by that, um, that are not necessarily linear, like one to another. Um, sorry if that doesn't make much sense. I guess what I'm trying to say there is just like. If, it, if we did option Slay the Spire, then you'd go to area one, then you'd go to area two. 
if we did Darkest Dungeon, it'd be you choose between like area one or two and you go off and do one, come back, and then you yeah. go off to do number two. That's all I'm trying to get out there. You just want the game to support an open world map, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you're implementing it, it just needs to be, yeah, a case of we you we can just have a, a map that would work in both of those settings, I guess, right? Yeah. Partially open world. Um, should we make an MMO? No? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. It's good. Yeah, some good food for thought anyway. Um, uh, was there anything else before we, I go on to some of the stuff I wrote up no, earlier? No, this, this, this is good. Uh, lovely, lovely. It's quite nice having a, like today's one is more chatting, chattenberg rather than, um, play tester yeah. which yeah uh, gives us more I time think, to I think we needed this because we, uh for for weeks we've been uh, adding features but yeah uh struggling with where where this is going really direction wise yeah yeah okay yeah that, that, that sounds good that sounds good um all right so the the kind of stuff that i wrote up earlier then we can talk about the story to finish if you want because that is only something i brought up just like 10 minutes before stream um, but if we look at the, so I, my challenge or my homework this week or last week that I didn't do was for looking at card crafting and resources. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to read this out for the sake of people who haven't seen it. Uh, I don't know if you've read it or not brain, so it'll be new yeah, to you right. if not. Okay. So not new to you, but here's the narrated version. So we, uh, we want a way to give play players a chance to have some control over their deck because but basically at the moment. Um, when you win a combat, you're presented with three random cards. Sometimes you don't want those cards, and we want to try and make it feel like even if you don't want any of them, there's some benefit to it. We already have a bit of that with, like, you can just choose to take more gold, uh, which is nice, but still, I think it's it's uh, making people feel like this card can be used for something else is, is beneficial. Uh, but we also want to give more rewards than just cards. So we already have, like, loot turn out. You can reveal loot. Uh, sorry, um, gold. Uh, like a tier one or tier two gold, which gives you X amount of gold based on the tier. Um, but we're also looking at adding potentially like these different resources and more on that in a bit. So we want to allow players to strategize with regards to resource management out of these resources that you, you could get from combat and events and consider how they want to spend their resources during their run, which will impact uh, the kind of the play style or the characters that they've got. Um, and then we want to also give players a reason to want to visit specific locations on the map. So incentivize the reason why you would want to go, oh, I want to go to the left side, even though the right side looks really easy. I really need to visit this type of event because I've accumulated this stuff that I can hand in over at this event. And it'll, it'll give like the map decision. It'll make the map more interesting and make it feel like you're making decisions earlier on and committing to ideas and plans, which uh, is nice in this type of game, in my opinion. Um, give a decision to make uh, something rewarding. Yeah, and they can reflect on doing something differently next time as well. So if they, it, the more decisions you give them, it just means that uh, the player, sorry, it means that they can they can take the blame and think maybe I could have made a different decision to have a different experience out at the end of it. Whereas if it's purely down to RNG, it can just feel like this game is just shit. So and we don't want that. So the specific uh, objectives of, of this kind of mechanic then relating to the, particularly to the mechanic then would be that uh, we want to let players gain cards that fit the, the characters and their deck type. We want to incentivize combat more because at the moment it's just a health drain, right? Um, yeah. whereas if you feel like you're getting something progressive from it rather than a, just a chance of cards, that's nice. You basically always get something for doing combat, which is good. Uh, whereas if you only get cards and you don't want any of them, that doesn't feel like it was worth it then. Uh, uh we want to give a feeling of progression. So if three cards drop, as an example here, if three cards drop and you don't want any of them, then it feels useless. However, if you gain some resources that you can be used later, the fight was not a waste. And then also it gives tools for the player to try and bend their deck to the style they want to play, but not total control. Because that's the thing, uh, th these games are never about like a Hearthstone game where you choose your deck and you know exactly what you're going to have. The The thing that makes it fun is the slight random element of it is like you have a base deck and you build your deck during your run. Uh, and that is obviously subject to RNG, but giving tools to allow the player to kind of bend that RNG to their, their preference or to the, the, the direction they want to push it 
um, is good. And what, what people tend to do playing these games is go, right, I've got this really good card. Let's try and build around this card. Or I've got these two characters together. Let's try and, you know, focus on, um, like, some synergies between abilities. Um, and so people will play around that rather than going, before they start playing, have a preconceived idea of what they want to achieve with their deck. Okay. Uh, so the actual mechanic then is that there would be a new resource uh, that can be used to craft cards. Uh, and there's two different proposals to this. So um, I, at the end, I'll give a bit of a summary of like two proposals. But just the, the general ideas involved in this then is that there would be resources, uh, either like three of them, but it might be six of them. Uh, and these different resources are basically currencies. If you just think of it as a currency that works with a specific group of people. Um, so we can just use countries now to make it easier. Um, so like if we, we see the Germans, then we can use, oh, it's, it doesn't actually work because all of Europe use the bloody Euro anyway. So damn it. Never mind about that <laughs> example. Okay. So, um, these different resources you can get, um, essentially you could earn them in three different ways. There might be, a, a more ways and so these don't all work together either. So idea one would be that you'd get a random drop of these resources after a fight. So this would be like you get the choice of cards and it says you also got like three um, uh, three of type X resource and one of type Y resource just randomly. Now, the downside with this that we're probably going to look at uh, is that this doesn't give much control to the player. You're still kind of subject to that randomness that we are trying to kind of combat against a little bit. Um, so, um, that, that's the one downside of it, but it is a lot more straightforward. Um, the other downside of it is it could also give you resources that you don't want to use. So let's say that it gives you, um, some currency for a, a group of people that you don't care about. Then you're stuck with like five of this, uh, Z currency, but you're never really wanting to use the Z currency. Your, your characters don't benefit from buying stuff from the Z people, let's say. So that's something to consider. Um, idea two, you could destroy cards at certain places like the smithy um, and they will give you resources. So it can either be random or it could be like if this card is a, um, uh, an, a Z type card, then you are likely to get Z resources from it when what you break it down. I was thinking. Uh, what random and that you were saying, yeah. Like there's more chance of getting that of getting the one that it's associated with, right? Sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then the third idea was, and this brings another big mechanic into it, but I don't think it's foreign for a game like Darkest Dungeon. I do think it's foreign for a game like Slay the Spire, but it could be interesting to, to bleed them together as well, um, is getting neutral vendor loot cards. So think of this as the junk items you get in Darkest Dungeon. Um, you know, where you have this inventory, you need to manage all of this loot that you got and you can sell it at the end of your run effectively. Um, but instead of selling it at the end of your run here, you can use it. You can sell this kind of, I'm calling it vendor loot. It basically means that the only purpose of this is to sell it to a vendor somewhere, right? So get, getting this, oh, sorry, what do you say, Brian? Nothing. Oh. I, I didn't open my mouth. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, so getting neutral vendor loot cards uh, and you hold on to those and you can sell them when you want. And I like this because it gives a bit of a, a gamble mechanic as well. So say you've got 10 of this, these items to sell. One, that's taking up inventory space. And two, you got to think, well, what do I want to use them on? So let's say you, you, you really like some Y-based merchants. So you can sell them for Y currency and you can use that to buy some Y-themed items or cards later. Um, but you can only see an X merchant on the map. Like you, you've got to make that choice. Am I going to hold on to these and not upgrade my deck for a bit? Um, or do I change my plan a bit and go, okay, I'll, I can do a mix of X and Y in this deck instead. Uh, and so it gives a bit of uh, strategizing once again for players to, to try and think what they want to do with these resources. It, we could also add inventory management. Uh, we can either do it as like the, the, this vendor loot is just a, an item that you just get and it adds, you have one of them, then you have four of them. Then you find another three, you have seven of them and it just keeps going up and there's no inventory management. But uh, if we find a need for other items that could be interesting, then it might, we could have it as a, like a physical inventory space like we have in Darkest Dungeon. 
Um, but for now, I think for the first iteration, definitely it would be easier just to have a count. Uh, and maybe like a weight limit or something like that, but whatever. Um, so then how do you spend this resources? So I keep saying like you're buying X, Y, or Z items. Uh, and my idea here would be that um, it depends which implementation we go for. But if, if we're doing idea, idea one where you just get these, um, you don't sell to a vendor X to get currency X, you just get a drop, a straight drop of currency X. If we do that, then you can spend it anyway, really. The idea is that like they they wouldn't need to be X, uh, like, sorry, I shouldn't use X anymore. There wouldn't need to be N amount of different event spots for each of the different currencies. Instead, you just have one where you can sell stuff. That's a bit more straightforward and less complex. It means also that the map generation is less susceptible to being like, oh, I never ever saw a chance to go to vendor Y. But it would be, I think we could probably design our map generation to say it has to include one of each vendor okay. type on one map generation, you know? So uh, it's a minor point there. Uh, if we did it with this vendor loot, though, uh, we, we could trade in the vendor loot at specific traders who are affiliated with the X, Y, or Z. Um, and then once you've got that resource, you can either buy stuff from those, which could be like a buff. So say you're with the 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 tanking or the, the, the guards, the big brave boys in armor. Um, those people might give you, you you could give them a buff and they, they will give you armor for the next three encounters or something like that. So you could spend some of your currency on instant rewards from them, or you can save that currency for when you get to a cardsmith and then you can say to the cardsmith, hey, here's three of this currency, give me a card. And the cards you get back are gonna be based on what resource you give it to the cardsmith. So if you gave them XXX, you're going to get a card which is, um, what's the right word? Which is constitutes of of XXX. Uh, that doesn't really make sense either. If you if you're not in my head, um, different types of cards will have a different kind of makeup of them. So, like we have different characters at the moment, where can be like it's two part tank, one part fighter, or it might be like one part wizard, one part. Uh, spiritual and one part fighter for like a monk or something like that. Uh, like those kind of balances we we're looking to have on cards as well. So you can trade, re give resources to the smithy and then it will generate a random card that matches that signature of those resources. So the idea is that each card would have, there'd be more than one card per signature, but ultimately uh, if you give them uh, like, the right formula, you've got like a 50-50 chance of getting a specific card you know uh, you want, for example. Um, I think there's some there's some uh, like edge cases that need further thought in that area, um, but still. So then uh, in order like how to spend it, we've got these different types of vendors that we would, uh, specific traders I said here. So um, I've broken these up instead of X, Y, Z now, the idea really would be if we want them to match the cards, they would need to match the term, the archetypes that me and Brain have as, as a term to represent the different uh, kind of elements that make up a, a skill set that a character has. So at the moment, we have like fighter, wizard, tank, uh, or that could be like a defensive or something, because it's the same name as the character at the moment, so it could be a bit confusing. I, I, I actually wanted to change the... A character class name to a brute or whatever right yeah 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 that could work yeah um so a uh, tank uh stealth spiritual and nature these are like the six kind of skill sets that will or the makeups or the composites i guess that would be combined to make these different characters so the way we've got it before is like the the warrior is fighter uh, two parts fighter one pass tank um the mage if i remember is two parts wizard one part fighter yes. um the healer uh the priest sorry is like two part spiritual one part fighter um so th there's different combinations that like uh make up the different characters and it's not just for six characters this is we've got some more penciled in which would be slightly different uh kind of combinations of these which gives us scope to take it forward a bit more um but so if these are the different ones then you can imagine that these would be our different factions they're not factions because they're all kind of like part of the same team they're just different kind of disciplines or whatever we want to call it right um so they could be like a brawler academy of these people who, who like fighting 
Uh, there could be a, some form of scholar wizardry school thing or place where people learn about the uh, magic and that. We can have like the, the royal guard to defend the queen or king or whatever, which is the like the defensive ones. A stealth could be some little subtle pickpocket pickpocketing crew or, you know, a bunch of people who are kind of outcasts or something like that. Uh, the spiritual could be the religious folk. And then we could have the uh, so the nature ones would be ones which are more in line with the environment uh, and the the inhabitants of the land and all of that jazz. So the idea is that you could, if you trade these neutral vendor loot things to them, they would then give you their own specific resource, which is tied to those. Um, I think I can't remember what this is. Something like it. We can just do a tooth for that or something, right? For all the things that they've killed. So. We'll just call them rat tooth for now because our enemies are rats. So um, you could trade in like half your resources for this and then that gives you that resource for the rest of, the, of your run then which you can spend. You can either spend it with them to gain a buff and the buff is based on the type of thing that they are. Um, and this would give you another reason to visit these people even if you don't want cards of that type. So if you're low on health, you might want to go in and go to the spiritual place. You don't want to build spiritual cards, but you want to pay for the buff so that you get health regen for the next three fights or something like that. Um, so that this that's what I was trying to think of with these buffs is it gives you another reason to go there rather than just healing, uh, or sorry, rather than just exchanging currency tokens. The second thing is this could also potentially replace random events which aren't affiliated with things such as the, like the well where we healed, right? Um, we could either replace or just use them as uh, extra ones. I'm not too sure. But um, the only reason I thought replace is because there's so many of them. It gives us more chances for the player to encounter them. So, um, yeah, it's something to think about. So the, the two proposals then. Proposal one is the simpler implementation. This is instead of having a resource for each... Uh, of these like fighter wizard tank stealth and all that you just have bronze silver gold scraps of metal and you gain these through winning combat for random events and from scrapping cards at the smithy you can uh, uh, scrap cards for bronze you can scrap abilities for silver you can scrap trinkets for gold and then the smithy will craft cards that have varying costs based on these resources um, and a random selection of end cards will be available to craft at the smithy. So you imagine he, he lays out his, his wares and there's like eight cards and they all have various costs of bronze, silver, gold. And you can choose which of those cards for him to craft for you based on the resources you give him. Uh, and then also the smithy is the same one that can upgrade your cards. So that's proposal A, which is a lot simpler. Uh, and then proposal B is the more complex one that we've kind of been talking about where we have this vendor loot concept where... Uh, you it has no value until you sell it to a certain um, discipline or faction or whatever we're calling it. And then and that the vendor UI, we can have like uh, vendors blueprints and your blueprints separately. Uh, so you can uh, so, use your own blueprints as well. Say, so, oh, what to to craft stuff? Do you mean or? Yeah. So you imagine that you craft at all of the different vendors. Yeah, so this vendor you visit only knows uh, to to craft these six cards. Oh right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and I yeah that that could work. That could work if you if you have blueprint. Yeah, that blueprint thing we mentioned before, right? Yeah. Mm, okay, I, I will catch up on chat in just a moment as well, spacing a little bit. Sorry. Um, and then okay, so if we the yeah the the second idea then. This proposal B is that they, we have this uh, valueless loot that you collect until you sell it. Uh, the map will need to include six different events for each of the, I say events, just nodes, I guess, for each of the different factions. And visiting each one of those will allow you to sell however many of your vendor loot in exchange for their currency. And then their currency can be used to maybe buy buffs or consumables on that on that same tile. Uh, but the resource can also then be used at the smithy in order to purchase new cards. Maybe we can make it that you can purchase new cards at that place as well. I don't know. Um, and then crafting involves adding like three resources and then pressing craft. Uh, a random card that matches the archetype uh, of the resources you provide will then be crafted. Uh, the smithy will allow you to trade resources at a cost of any three resources for one of a specific one. 
So if you if you have got like leftover resources or you really need one of type X, then you can give like Z, Z, Y and it'll give you an X for it, for example. So they were the two kind of proposals I had. Thanks for coming to my TED talk, everyone. Uh, I'm going to catch up on chat quickly and then I'll ask Brainoid um, his thoughts and uh, Spacey, of course, as well. So um, Spacey, you were mentioned, say, uh, what if you sometimes see a wandering merchant who will trade? Here comes no currencies. Hang on. What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean by here comes no currencies? But uh, with a wandering merchant, uh, we'd, would that be at a specific, do you mean wandering in terms of just story-wise they're wandering? Or do you mean stories if they move from node to node as well? Okay. Uh, and then the, let's finish going through. Um, I think parts should either be uh, adjectives or nouns, not both. Yeah, some are fighter, and we also have nature. <laughs> so it's good. Ah, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, uh, that could work as well, Spacey. Yeah, uh, saying like a shady cat in a trench coat who wants to trade you a clover, a the fur leaf clover. Yes. Um, yeah, we'd need to build on the idea of like the different people who could interact with different currencies or or, or whatever it be. But that, that's the general idea, at least. And Littlewood, welcome to stream. Hope you're doing well. So, um, yeah, Brain, what what are your thoughts now of World uh, of Text? You? First of all, uh, I'm again considering the base idea. And if we have shorter runs and we go back to base often, then the, the all this could be at the base as well. Um, yes. The, the academy uh, could, could be at the base. Yes, I, I agree with you. And it really makes sense for them all to be there. So this is what I was kind of, when you proposed this earlier the uh, on this call, when you were saying like, oh, what if it's like Darkest Dungeon style? Part of me is like, yes, that really ties in to like why we could have, you know, we don't need tiles on the maps for each of these anymore. We These could just be the ones back at the base. However, the, the slight conflict there is that the purpose of trading them in normally, at least before I thought about Darkest Dungeon, was that to improve your deck for that run. But we could always just do it for... It could be like Minecraft, you know, where instead you're actually doing different recipes to, to unlock different cards. Yeah. Where you go and you try put, okay, this resource, this resource, this resource, this gives you one of these cards. And then you can craft cards that way, you know? And you can try things that you don't know yet. And it might give you, and it'll show you what card it makes. But that would mean every card needs a special combination. Uh, and yeah, just for fun, each run the blueprints and the merchants are, or, or whatever, at the academy is updated. And blueprints are changed. Uh, what, do, what do you mean exactly by that? Uh, the cards they can craft are changed. Uh, yes. Yes, okay. Time. Yeah, that that would. If we don't do a direct crafting like XXZ always gives you card uh, yes. A, then yeah, I'd agree with you that it, it varies per time, um, which which means sometimes it's worth just holding on from like, well, we're gonna keep, we'll go out on another run and see if the like we get this card afterwards. The the tricky thing is you end up being able to build up a like a library of cards to build like the super deck, which is quite a, almost against. I don't know. I don't know. If you lose cards, it's not so bad. I, I was, I was going to, sorry, my, I'm saying half sentences here. Um, it feels a little against the idea of like uh, the, these Slay the Spire style games, right? Because normally you don't keep stuff run for run and you can get a super powerful deck once, but that's fine because that's just one run and it's okay for it to be imbalanced and you end up feeling good about it and you talk, you go, oh, remember that time where I got these cards together and it worked really well? then that feels good. Um, whereas if we have the Darkest Dungeon style, if you do be able to get like snowballing effects, it then just carries on and it feels like you might just get really like strong. It doesn't just impact that one run. You might just have a save file where you have all the cards and it feels like you can just face roll everything. Uh, first, uh, I think we should lose cards like a, a character dying, for example, they should lose the abilities and the trinkets maybe. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to think how do they lose cards, actual cards, you know? Well, it, it, they just die with their cards. They they fade away. I don't know. Well, if a whole run ends, 
then and like if all your character dies die then yes or maybe that's something if you retreat and you save your character you leave all your cards behind that sort of thing could work mm, yeah so there, there might be ways to i think it's just if you can craft cards you need a way to to lose cards too and i think you can always like get your base deck back if you will so when you're yeah. back at the town like there's always like you can replenish to the minimum base deck and you could you could see a a result after you go back to base in the heat of the battle uh, you lost some abilities or skills <laughs> you you lose these two cards yeah yeah uh, no it could work it could work okay cool cool go ahead anything uh, uh what other thoughts i had something else wait uh I can't remember right now. Uh, I will soon. Sorry. Well, the first thing you said was about like how it would impact it if it was a darkest dungeon thing that you could have all the different uh, characters and the the factions or whatever in the in the same place. Oh. Just in case that rejigs your memory at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I I liked what you wrote down. I did. Yeah, they all make sense. Um, the comparisons are. Making sense. Mm. Uh, yeah, we can't say much bef uh, before testing at least one idea, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, at the yeah. moment, I uh, at the moment I feel proposal A would be easier to do. However, I think it, it'll add a lot less. It, it's effectively just like you it, another way to earn a card. Sure. Whereas proposal B gives a whole bit more of strategy and hoping to see different things on the map and uh discovering or like acquiring cards that you want to acquire yeah so like like my i lean towards b i just think it's a lot more work <laughs> well i uh... Again, it's still early to implement this, so it's no problem. We can design a bigger system for this. And yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, did you have any thoughts on the inventory side of it? Whether it, we should make it a an actual mechanic, or would it just be a case if you just collect rent? I don't know if it actually adds much, but I am feeling like we're gonna. I have to put it in there. I, we need it in in different modules. Uh, yeah, well, in terms of like what if we find a blueprint, for example. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's an example. Yeah. And like, part of me wonders, like, does does the trinkets you're not using would they go into your bag or something, or like the cards you're not using or something like that? Yeah. Because that gives you less reason to no. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm also trying to make sense of uh, why we're uh, traveling out with three characters, and w w that could be our transport, uh, and that transport has an inventory uh, that we're carrying with us, the items we're carrying with us. And uh, it, it's a transport that get that can uh, transport three people only. <laughs> So are you thinking like why is there only three of us going out rather than all of us? Yes. Hmm. Uh, that that could be the inventory could be a part of the this caravan or what whatever it is. I don't, well the thing is, I guess in Darkest Dungeon One they didn't really give you a reason either, did they? No, they didn't. Like why can't you all go into the? the... What? Uh, what I'm trying to make sense, the reason why I'm trying to make sense of it is that probably in the future we will we, we'll enforce some stuff uh, that, that you're going to be questioning us. Like, I, I'm really uh, imagining, like, uh, you have to uh, escort Lady Kettenberg to this node, so you have to replace one of your characters with Lady Kettenberg, and you you battle with... Two, two, and Lady Kettenberg is there as well. Right. An what? escort. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to uh, how do, like one. I'm I'm fine with that as an idea. I'm just trying to tie it to what you were saying like a minute ago before, in terms of the 
trying to why is there only three or is this just a separate point you're thinking no no uh it's actually tied okay like, uh so the re you are you are replacing one of your characters with lady kettenberg cards right it's a character as well yes so aren't you questioning now that like why aren't we going as four Right. Okay. So you're saying so we need a reason why there's only three, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I see what you mean. Like if we had some transport that only had room for three, but then at the same time, it uh, two things come to mind. One is, can, would it just be silly? Yeah. A catmobile, and then secondly, um, it's very similar to Darkest Dungeon Two. Uh, elements of it uh, of like they have a wagon they're traveling on that wagon you know um well, so it needs to not be like a huge part of it i feel or like the yeah, i wouldn't want it to be like a visible thing on the screen all the time i don't think it's something they discovered but <laughs> yeah no, fine, cor yeah. correct it's just if we're drawing on elements from darkest dungeon one as well it uh it's just something that i'd, I'd want to be a little wary of true 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 i agree i agree oh. Um, well, we came here from from the idea of inventory, actually. Uh, so uh, let's get back to that. Yeah. So yeah, what what sort of things could we carry? So we we already have um, like this this general loot that you're gonna sell, like uh, trophies or whatever we call it that you get from combat. Um, uh, that you would or the vendor loot that I was on about. That's what I mean. Uh, coins could take a place in the inventory. <laughs> just yeah. For yeah you could do like you could buy items like um from the we said i mentioned it earlier like from these different faction people you could spend the currency not just on cards but on their items as well so instead of it being like oh the whole part you get a buff you could have something like a you choose when to eat it and then you get that buff and that would need to sit in your inventory as well yeah like out of combat buffs or um heal Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, things that you use outside of combat. I don't think we should let you use it inside of combat. Yeah, no. Personally. Because um, I think Darkest Dungeon has that with things like um, bandages, right? And that you can use to stop uh, bleeding and and the likes. And it is nice to use those in combat as well, but I feel like I don't want to just go, like, go down that same route. And I feel like I don't want the complexity of having UI of inventory on the screen at the same time either. I'm thinking like we're gonna use the support cards for that bit. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So maybe you can buy support cards. Sorry. Maybe you could buy support cards. However, we rework support cards. Uh, but, yeah. Rather than like, but then, then that they're not gonna go in an inventory. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, uh let me catch up on chat quickly apologies um so um a little bit you were saying you're doing okay no news on your contract uh what, what's going on with your contract uh because I, I knew that you got this new role but i do was it just like a six month thing with the idea of extending it but there's no news on it that's uh stressful if so sorry to hear uh, in xcom they don't tell you why you're only bringing four operatives on a mission instead of six either um uh Unlock the fifth and through base upgrades. I'll research if you remember. Maybe a party of three is stealthier than a party. You say, yeah. So in my mind, I was thinking out for something similar where you could like, is it we're going somewhere where there's only room for like three people in there? And I guess that's maybe kind of how Darkest Dungeon play it is that you know it's a a corridor. You're going one at a time. It's a small kind of enclosed yeah, but area. But in the middle of run, when you try to replace one of the characters, they, I I start to question that no uh, i'm not questioning it why are we going out in the first place but uh, in the middle yeah. of the when something happens yeah <laughs> i start to question oh what well, it's like oh you found a new character and you yeah. have to choose one to re to replace True. yeah that, that it needs it does need some explanation i feel yeah uh okay that, that that's it's good to, to think about um we need uh, an explanation as to why we can only have a party of three. Uh, it, it's it's similar in pathway as well. You you travel with a jeep, and uh, you can only have four characters in it. I guess. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, because just it's not about to. Uh, maybe you ride. only have three horses, you know? Or, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's just something as simple as that, like the like. Uh, um, just because I'm, I'm trying to think of like what vehicle would fit in with the the kind of RPG cats that we've got, and I struggle. I was going to say you're not allowed to have more than uh, three people in in a uh, transport because of the corona regulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Um. Okay. Well, we can only have a party of three. That I'll, I'll note that as a as a point. Um. Uh, inventory we're talking about. Um. Could uh is is it necessary? Um. So the things that we could use it for, we were just talking about, we 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 could could store currency in stacks in inventory, a very darkest dungeon style. But still, I'm sure they're not the first ones to do it either. Um, we also said uh, could store uh, blueprints, which are basically like the 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 recipe for crafting cards. Um, until you. you them. Uh, sorry, were you starting to say something? Mate? Yeah, uh, I was too excited and I shouted. Sorry, uh, I said quest items. Quest items? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, we did talk about quests, didn't we? And that definitely fits the darkest dungeon theme a little bit more. Because we wanted that with Freggy, didn't we? Yeah. Oh crikey, I forgot about that. Hang on, isn't? Are we just turning this into Freggy now? Essence. Freggy's original design was that you go out and you come back to the town and, and then, oh no, you go to different towns and you get quests while you're out there. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I don't mind. I quite like the design for that too, but um, it's interesting. We, we can think about that though, because I, I know we had some chats about it during the game jam. Uh, okay. Um, quest, quest items. Uh, let's just say uh, quests to BC for now. Um, we also have the uh, the vendor loot, as I've called it. We can come up with a better name than that if it's confusing. Um, uh, that would be another thing in there, and maybe like consumables. Um, however, this may be replaced by uh, support cards. So they're the kind of thoughts that we have. Uh, the the negatives well, of it is like inventory management not, and UI, but they have to re get replaced by support cards. I think when the consumables are out of combat, consumables and it, uh, inside the ones are the support cards. Oh uh, yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, out of combat um, consumables. Uh, yeah, it's just for out of combat. That's fine. So. Yes, you could do. It does give that balancing game. Um, I personally found balancing your inventory really stressful <laughs> in Darkest Dungeon, but I think that's part of it as well. You're, you're weighing off like safety of, I need these items to make sure that I don't die versus let's take as much loot back as we can. So um, I, I think it's, it's a nice mechanic, even if it, it comes with a little bit of stress. Uh, the worst mechanic in any game is, is I guess, Resident Evil. I hate it. <laughs> well, inventory-wise. Yes. Uh, I, I know, I remember combining, like, the yellow, green, and red leaves or whatever together. In yeah, all... and you need to carry your tapes with you to save the game. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that sounds like a really clever design, but it's just horrible to to actually play and experience, right? Yeah, and, and you collect this uh, quest uh, information video card, videotape, and <laughs> <laughs> you just discard it at some point. But yeah, you want to watch it <laughs> go, but you also want to collect these bullets for your gun, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it gives me slight. I didn't play too many of the Resident Evils, but I, it, what you've said it, triggering enough of my memories. Um, uh, okay, yeah. So the inventory is is possible. I think it's. 
Yes, potentially yes, but not yet. But no rush or urgency. No rush. No rush no. Yeah, because it, it could perfectly be fine without it, right? It could just add another layer, I feel. Um, yeah, I, I'm frustrated when you're saying battle doggos to ride. I, I was trying to think of what would be good for cats to ride, because cats riding horses could be odd. Cats riding bigger cats could be odd. I don't know what cats would ride. Doggos does make for interesting, like, tame dogs. That shows what that, how, how brave these cats are, right? Or maybe domesticated rats. Can you imagine that? Well, at the moment, uh, Willie, uh, our enemies are rats in the game. Uh, and so it'd be a little conflict of that. Riding animals isn't V. Uh-oh, Spacey. We're going to have to take that off the packaging of the game then. Cam ha camels. Maybe it changes based what environment you're in. If you're in the desert, camels. If you're in the swamp, frogs. Monstrous four-legged vegetables, however. Thank you. Capybara to cute as well. I'm down with those. It's against non-vegan cats, really. Say that again. Uh, Space is against non-vegan cats. Yeah, uh, well. Well, Mario is not vegan. She she does hate your cat, Mario. She told me. She said, well, if, if he ate salads, I would love that cat, but unfortunately. They could be riding um, cleaning robots. <laughs> <laughs> they do that a lot. Roopers. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't mind this medieval oldie setting. We're just gonna have some robot vacuums to <laughs> to vacuum the meadow. Uh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, was there any more feedback on the that design thing uh, that we're talking about here that I haven't put down in our general kind of review of today? Yeah, I, I'm still confused which one is better, but. Um... And I'm even more confused when I uh, co when I add the consideration of the uh, darkest dungeon type of base thing. Uh, I need more time. <laughs> yeah, watch it. no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think I want to explore the disadvantages of the darkest dungeon style uh, base. So uh, yeah, that's... like my one of the main ones that I always like thought of, but it might be one of those like surface levels concerns that isn't actual reality. Um, is it just feels like you can finish the game easier then? Uh, not easier, but there's like an end point. Um. And so, well, like once you've once you've got all the cards and you, you you've got a big, you can get like a steamroller in a sense. You can you have to balance the game well, otherwise you can just like accumulate all the cards and the characters and just complete everything, yeah. and then there's nothing left to do. Whereas Slayer the Spire has that extra replayability, where it's even the same run on the same difficulty can be, it feels different each run, and it can be um it can be really difficult if you mess up or if you get some bad cards or whatever, and so. I think that replayability is nice. Um, however, maybe we don't need to make a game that's infinitely replayable. Maybe we can make a game that's like four pounds ninety nine. People can play it for a few hours and they're done. It, you know, it, it doesn't. Uh, I think I'm I'm very. Uh, I'm trying to imagine as if this is going to be something that we could, that would be, inf you know, uh, as epic as some of the games that we have played. You know. Yeah. Which is quite ambitious. <laughs> they can pay 99 cents for swimsuit tank. <laughs> can you imagine even just little speedos? Uh, yes, I can, in fact. You could use some uh, Borat-style swimsuit. <laughs> yeah, just over the shoulders as well, right? Uh, I mean, we can do in-game purchases. That's totally fine. Maybe that's how the real fans support us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Space has already got some drafts up. Of truth. Um, 
Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I guess we need to kind of think about that a little bit. So uh, some goals then for moving forward, whether it's next weekend or the weekend after, whenever we get a, a chance to review next, would be um, explore at least design-wise rather than implementation. Uh, the uh, the key uh, differences between uh, STS and DG style. Yeah, uh, and if there's a possibility, we we could go for a, a hybrid. Uh, I'm not sure how yeah, that would be. Yeah, yeah. But you could always have it that you go out on longer runs and you just you don't permanently store. Maybe there isn't this like cycle of characters at the base, but there could be some elements still at the base, which would be interesting. I'm not sure. Or it could just be one run where the village you keep coming back to, but it's only for that one run duration. So like each checkpoint, you're back in that town and you can swap characters out and you can trade in your currency, but still, you, you're still going to this one like Mount Doom. And when you get to Mount Doom and you do it, your whole town and everything resets and you start again. Yeah, and the design of chapters could, could also uh, mean something there. I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe okay. you lose something when you're proceeding to the next sector. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there, there is a... Oh, that's ringing a bell with... Uh, I can't think what game it is or what mechanic it is even, but you basically have a thing where you have to kind of spend everything you have and anything you haven't spent, you will lose going forward. Uh, and that, that that's it for me that never felt too negative anyway it just felt like a, okay that's how it works so and sometimes you will just have to just lose stuff um but it makes it rewarding when you can feel like you're, you're utilizing all of your resources but, the only thing i don't like is that uh you got captured and you lost all your weapons <laughs> uh what in a in a game do you mean yeah you wake up in a prison and you have to escape the prison and uh Get back to things. <laughs> you don't want to do that in Kattenberg, then, no? No. <laughs> the rat jailer. Uh, okay. Uh, so, one, we need to explore that. Two, um, look at uh, 3D, or let's just say new uh, implementation for the map. Node graph. Um, what else do we want? Uh, oh, yeah, think about explanation for limited party size. Uh, I'd also like to try and think about like boss encounters, encounters that are different to just the normal card, the bread and butter stuff that we got at the moment. I know we have like Mobius as a boss already, but I, I worry that I, I don't know whether it needs an extra layer or not of like of depth or, or just like a, a, the, the card game would need to be deep enough for it to work to have interesting bosses that don't just feel like more powerful normal enemies you know yeah so um we need to think about that as well think about um how uh future bosses could work uh do they need more than just well, my, my initial idea was to, to have the bosses have some harmony with the environment they are in. And currently we don't have environments, different environments. So uh, that's, that's, that wasn't a concern. Uh, yeah. But yeah, well, I, I, I know what, what you're going for here. Like uh, something more than the actual uh, gameplay we have. Currently. Yeah, something that just affects the gameplay, but is you can't do it as a player. Yes. You know, some, some special mechanic that they have. Um, like if it's a spory, like a mushroomy base fungal forest boss that, you know, at the start of the... Or their special ability is that they would, I know, like infect half of your cards at random or something like that. Uh, they or, morph into other characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah, or they could like, they could plant seeds, for example. Um and those seeds could like grow on cards and turn into extra enemies or or maybe they could do stuff to destroy some of your cards or to so you have to use them in order to make it not get destroyed um things that cause your characters to have to move um yeah things that just shift the dynamic of the battle a bit i guess but 
Uh, inscription bosses were more like themed groups than specific cards. Um, yes, themed groups of enemies, but then they also have... Oh, have you played through it now, Spacey? Or are you just relating from my playthrough? Because I remember you said you wanted to play it. Um, yeah, but, but they also, if you think, the boss, they, they each had a mechanic. So the fisherman could steal one of your cards or would steal the next card you played. So you had to kind of play around that. The uh, the the gold digger guy, when you beat him first life, he would then change all cards you had into... He would destroy them all effectively, which was cool. And then you had the, the trapper who would lay out eight cards on the board and you had to buy a couple of them, but the rest of them remained to those. So they, they, it's very... That's very kind of specific. We probably want it to be a little less, like, specific. Uh, but, um, yeah, there was more than just the cards, right? Just from what you saw. Okay, cool, cool. Hmm. Yeah, I just thought of the uh, very the cliche thing, like the slimes. Uh, you see three, uh, not the slime rats, but actual slime uh -huh. <laughs> mechanic. Uh, so you see three, you face three slimes, and you kill one, and uh, it, it's replaced with another card that is like uh, smaller slimes. Yeah. And you and it's replaced with even smaller slimes. Yeah, the, the trouble we have with that is like physical representation of them, right? Because it still yeah. have to take up one slot unless we make them jump on card slots. Yeah, the, the card is called a group of slimes, right? <laughs> yeah, but then you have a group of smaller slimes and a group of smaller, smaller slimes. Yeah. But if we, if we use that front line, it could be interesting mechanic with that, right? It yeah. could make a smaller slime and then chuck like some goo in front of them which acts as a shield or something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we can come... I, I get what you're saying, though, for sure. Um, uh, yeah, I, I guess a, a thing that comes with this is bosses, I feel, might be able to have abilities that aren't cards, or maybe they, they never actually play on cards. And the, the, the min they have, like, minions with them that would play on cards, but they have their own special abilities. Sorry, uh, real quick, uh, returning to my old idea. Uh, group of slimes. Uh, so the more HP they have, the more damage they have. Uh, because you, do, you didn't kill them yet. Uh, but if you kill a few of them, they have less damage. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Although it does make that first turn horrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, but it, it does also negate the idea that you just instantly nuke down one of them, right? Which is normally the tactic on that. They, they, they have a cool... I like how they did it. It's like the Spire of the Slimes, where when they get to half health, they will split. So you kind of have to try and time it to keep them just above half health. And then you try and nuke one of them um, from just over half health to nothing afterwards. Maths, eh? Maths, indeed. Uh, um, yeah, we have a lot less of a predictable kind of damage output in, in uh, Kattenberg anyway, don't we? So Yeah, we, we have other uh, strengths, I guess. Mm. Yes, for sure, for sure. That's why it's important not to try and kind of simulate it. So I try and not and try not to directly say, oh, let's do it this way, because I've seen it work in another game. But got to remember, we've got a lot of different things. True. Um, all right, so what we've got, we've got to explore the differences between the different styles, uh, look at the implementation of the new map, explanations of party size and future bosses. And I guess, um, yeah, I guess until we have, uh, think more about the STS versus DD, maybe story can hold, be on a little bit of hold. Like I'm having for Spacey to, to have a think about the kind of lore side of it. That, that doesn't have to be on hold, but in terms of like a campaign story, then... Uh, I guess that will make more sense when we know how we want to do the the flow or the cycle or whatever, right? Sure. We can just do do the the on the on trend thing at the moment, which is time loop games, right? Uh, yeah. You get to the end and then you get just sent back again. Groundhog Day. Um, okay, cool. Uh, do do we have anything else to discuss, or are we good for the day? Uh, I think we're good. Okay, that sounds good. Fine to me as well. Um, we, we've got some areas to explore. We, we'll, we'll have a chat. And these aren't as like actionable, but I guess it's one of those things just to have a think and, and have something to talk about when we chat next, right? Make, like that we've explored it rather than just scratching our chins about it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds cool. 
All righty. Um, so in which case, thank you, Brainoid, for, for the chat. Uh, we will try and catch up next weekend. I'm trying to remember if I've got particular plans. Uh, yes, I, I do have some, but hopefully it won't. Yeah, I should have some time on the Saturday or the Sunday at least. We'll see. We can we can discuss it on Friday. So when to do it? Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Um, yes. Okay. Well, um, thank you for your time, then, dude, and we'll, we'll catch up soon. Have a nice one, bye bye. Nice one. Cheers, bro. Okay, the wonderful Bora, as always. Uh, yeah, and thank you for hanging out as well, chat. Uh, more of a, a, a chin wag today rather than looking at the actual gameplay. But um, as Brian said, I think it was really healthy to to do it because I think there there definitely is. Uh, it helps us with direction. I think it's easy if we focus on features and go, "Ooh, does that look cool? Ooh, look, our game does a new thing." But what you got to think of that the bigger picture and how it fits into the bigger ambition of the game, and it's hard to do that um, in the current state because we are quite limited with our kind of encounter chain and, and enemy types and and the likes so um yeah yeah it, it was worthwhile 